Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. This is where I sing. Well, that's uh, that's our little theme song, and that means it's time for the ramble. We go from now until midnight Eastern Daylight Time, and in about uh, 25 minutes from right now, we'll talk to our citizens panel. But uh, you know, uh, we have a we have a guest, and we always uh, do something special to bring him on. Okay, it's that time when we make a call out to the other coast of the United States, and we surprise somebody because it surprises him, and then he answers the phone with something strange. Here we go. Here we go. When I said I'd be happy to be Putin's bitch, and I'll blow him any time, and I'll do his bidding, and I'll... Hello? Yes. Oh, no. Uh, yes. Oh? This is Stephen Pearl, by the way. Oh, yeah. oh we, I, we were on. Okay, I thought I heard a click. Isn't I heard that, a, the yeah. dial post. Oh, no, we, we are on. We are on. Oh, Jesus. It was a hot mic. Okay, so I start over? I had a big bit I was going to do. Okay, wow. go right ahead. Do the big bit. Well, when I said I was happy to be Putin's bitch and I do his bidding, and I would I would uh, be more than happy to sell him any atomic secrets we have, and I'll blow him any time as long as he doesn't release the tape he has of me with the goat and the zucchini and the lesbian biracial conjoined twins. I meant to say America first. Da, 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 da. Thank you. I'm the new world first. Exactly the way you did it the first time I called you, and then we had to redo it because I fucked up the recording. Yeah, and it's a brand new bit too, and I remembered it. All the brain cells I try to destroy. Are every you going to do that in your? Magic are you going to do that in your next comedy show? I might do that part of my my skits and sketches as part of my little routine there. I might throw that in a little. I go, whoa, fresh material for the first time since 1985. Uh, this e boy's e on the ball. Even you have been affected by the lying and duplicitness and the traitorism of this president, right? Oh, I'm insane, insane. He's, he just, he crossed the, well, he crossed the line a lot, but he just went way over it. It's like, it's like uh, Jesus going, well, Judas told me he didn't do it. What can I do? So, yeah. I've, like, I've, uh, I've had a, a world of experience of hating presidents, okay? Yeah. Of oh, yeah. hating I them over the I years. Have that. I too. Uh, and I can't think of it. All of them look good by comparison now. Well, somebody said all the dumbness of George W. Bush and all the corruption of Nixon rolled into one. Yeah. And when I he saw he appointed that motherfucker Stephen Miller, that bald head, it looks like Paulie Shore fucked a light bulb in the 80s, and this was the result. <laughs> oh, I hate bald heads. Bald heads are pedophiles. It's true. It's true. All bald heads. They say if you smash a bald head with a pickaxe real hard right in the middle of the forehead, all kinds of yummy banana taffy will come out. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I heard it in a love song. Anyway, oh, <laughs> I, I, I judge someone by who they attract and who they surround themselves with. And this guy surrounds himself with the scummiest of the soulless scum pieces of shit ever. Well, he kept so talking I, about... I can't be quiet anymore. Ow, ow. He kept talking about draining the swamp, and apparently he did, but he's using what he found. Exactly, he's fishing from the swamp. So, yeah. well, here's some slime. I'll put this on. I'll use that. You'll be Secretary of State. Unbelievable! It's just, oh my God! Anybody, Talk about learn as you earn. <laughs> anybody that believes uh, uh, Putin when he says he doesn't uh, have anything on Trump is nuts. Exactly, he's got some major. I want to see that. Can't just be a PP tape. It's got to involve <laughs> like you know vegetables and farm animals and stuff like that and bodily fluids and. Uh, yeah. It'll come out sooner or later. Can't wait. Be part of my collection. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, boy. This is better than a Chuck Berry tape. Holy crap. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You know the pissing in Boston. I feel the WPA. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, Chuck Berry tape was for real. That was, oh, yeah. You know. uh, what was his famous <laughs> line out of that when uh, it's only P or something like that? Come on, baby, it's only P. 
Oh, was, well, I don't <laughs> something like that. I had to, I have the tape, so it's pretty it's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. He's standing up in a hot tub and uh, peeing in a girl's face. And, <laughs> I, I can't kiss you, baby. You smell like pee. Yeah, was that it? Something <laughs> like that? Yeah, yeah, boy. Yeah, that's the guy who wrote Johnny Be Good. Oh my God, my golden my golden idol is idol is tarnished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he still was the best. Yeah, well, he still was the best ever. Oh, all I can say is Chuck Berry and uh, and Keith Richards and Willie Nelson should be allowed to do whatever they want, anything. They want to eat exactly. a baby or you know whatever, you know, just stomp a puppy, whatever. They should be allowed to do whatever they want. Those I think three, I think we're, I think we're going to lose Willie soon. I think he's quite. Ill. Oh God, he's up there, but I hope not. I hope he dies smoking. Yeah, but I I I, I hear that he's not well. You know, well, I know. I've heard. I've heard that too, and uh, I hope. I hope it's a phony rumor, but the man is in his eighties, and now, never I, know I, when, uh... I, I watched a, a a video of Willie Nelson forty years ago. Okay, when, uh, when he was a young, when he was a youngin, and when he yeah, had, youngin. when he had. Uh, I think he had blonde hair. It looked like, you know. Oh, really? Yeah. Was, and, he, was uh, he clean cut, or did he have the shoulder length locks? He was kind of. He was. He had the shoulder length locks, but he was clean uh -huh. cut, you know. Okay. And I was watching him, and I said, "There's something just not right here. That guitar <laughs> has the same hole it has in it now." <laughs> and you would think after forty years of playing that same guitar, there just yeah. would be no guitar left. Well, part of that hole has lots of memories. When I sang for all the girls I loved before, it was a wonderful thing. Ike Turner punched my guitar, and I'll never forget it. I wonder if he gets his guitar pre-worn out. Yeah, it's like those jeans they sell with the holes in them. <laughs> I need a guitar that looks like it's been smashed up a bit. Yeah. You want to see our Peter Townsend aisle? We got a whole ton of them here. Yeah, right here. Just, but they're shards. They're just shards. Yeah. That's all Here's are. our used Who merchandise. I think you would find quite a bit here. I could never figure that out. You know, I mean, yeah, it was a it was a a, a great gimmick to smash your guitars on stage, <laughs> but you're you're you are smashing the very thing. That you use as an instrument, and I, I don't know. Hey, it was a gimmick. It was an anarchy thing. Let's see. I saw them do that back in 1968 when I saw the Who in the Doors. I heard they still that, smash I, their instruments. I heard that they they exchanged instruments before they did that. When they played the cheap stuff or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they would get, start playing the cheap stuff and then they would, you know, set that on fire. Yeah. Well, what? Uh, it, <laughs> Jimi Hendrix set his on fire. Uh, he went his. He set his on fire. Yeah. yeah, it's a sacrifice, brother. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's taking out sugar cubes, you know. He probably thought he was selling, setting Mitch Mitchell on fire. Now, by the I way, know, man. Everything was fire. earlier when you were doing your impression of Trump, it sounded a lot like Reagan. Well, yeah. first you got to talk like Reagan, then you take it up and you make it more breathy and you lie a lot more. That's the best I can do. I'm not rich little. Yeah, well, what I'm <laughs> saying is is that I'm. are you recycling your impressions? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, that does. Yeah, you just, well, <laughs> what was it? Robin had a bit. You, you, you want to do George Bush Sr., you do John Wayne and you tighten up your ass. So, you know, it's kind of, <laughs> yeah. everything's kind of recycled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, um, uh, what was it? I, I used to have a, one impression that I did and I said, I, there was an easy way of me to explain how to do it, but I can't remember now. Do you know what I was told by, you know, Harry Shearer is, of course. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. But I know. Harry said to me once, I said, what is, uh, uh, how, how hard are impressions to do? He said, impressions are very hard to do when somebody's young. He right. said it's very hard to get a handle on their vocal styles because right. they haven't matured. But when they get old, you can do an impression of them. Uh. He said, like, we do the old Ronald Reagan. We don't do the uh. young Ronald Reagan. Oh, no. You sound like a regular guy. You know, we do the, you know, we, all, all the people we do, <laughs> we do as old people. And, yeah. um but then I met up with uh, what? Well, who's the guy who did Ren and Stimpy? Uh, he's a, a he does voices for cartoons, and he said to me, he, he what he was able to do is he did uh, uh, not Mo Howard. Who was the other Mo Shemp, Curly? No, Mo, Larry. Larry. Hey Mo, Larry what Fine. are we doing now? He, what are we doing yeah. now? He did Larry Fine. 
Yeah. As a young man, in fact, when he did Ren and Stimpy, <laughs> when he did Ren and Stimpy, when he did Ren, he was doing Larry Fine. Do a little Larry Fine, uh, and you'll see he'll be doing Stimpy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Has to be very nasal, Mo. Hey, Mo, what do we do now? What do we do yeah, now? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but what he could do was he could. That was he said that was the young Larry. He said, "You want to hear the old Larry?" And then he did the stroke Larry. He did the old Larry, uh -huh. and and he was the only guy I knew who could do the young and the old. There's another guy, uh, the guy who was on Second City. Um, he used to do Bob Hope all the time. Oh, he, uh, Dave he, Thomas. Dave Thomas. He could do. Damn, wow. He could do Hope as a young man, and then oh he yeah, could he do, did a great Hope. He did a Hope just relaxing and speaking. And right, just. and then he could do Hope as an old man. Yeah, it's right. Very, He's great at both. Very difficult to do and very difficult because oh. in a lot of cases, like Hope was fully formed when he was younger. You could do an impression oh, sure. of him. You could do an impression yeah. of him. And as he got older, he just slowed down a little bit. Well, what is, you know, sure. right over there, you know. Hey, um, I need Egbert, boy, she was wild. Okay? She was wild. In the later Hope on the panel shows in the 70s. Yeah. So, you know. The thing I loved about Harry Shearer is he did impressions nobody else did. Like, like like Wallace and Alan Fink, the pressure nobody else did. He did him so well. My God. Yeah. Um. Um. um who was it? Who was it? Did. Uh, um. I'm trying to think. Somebody. Oh, I'm. I'm out of it today. I can't remember uh, any, anything. I can't even remember where I was going with that thought. Let me have some more. Eat a cup of Joe and listen to Frank Sinatra singing the coffee song. You'll be right on top of it. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. Anyway. Uh. uh you can also, um, you know what I hate, though, listening to? I, I, I think I've told you this before. I listen to Sinatra a lot on my sure. iPhone. I mean, you know, if something comes up, I put it on shuffle, and if something comes up and it's interesting, I listen to it. But if it's Sinatra, it's there. I And I, yeah. I, I keep clicking until I get to another Sinatra. And the saddest thing is I have a concert of him in Madrid in about 1986. Yeah. Uh -huh. Horrible, just that, that off night, huh? Ghastly. I, I as soon as I hear it come on, I have to go to another track. I can't listen to it. It is so <laughs> bad news, man. I mean, Sinatra, was, was, was he just old or drunk or just off it? Or he was out of key. He his voice was shot. You know. Now what's funny is I have a recording because a lot of these are bootlegs of the same concert the next night, and he was terrific. Yeah, yeah. Just he, he nailed it the next night. He fucked up the first night. He nailed it the second night. Any entertainer, it happens. Yeah. But I'm telling Even you this Frank. now. In the old days, when he was younger, he never fucked up. Oh no, because he wanted it, man. He had the eye and a tie. No, but he, he wanted he, it bad, he, and he, he was amazing he, at it. He went on. He, the only thing he took serious he in his life was his singing. It's the only thing he yep. took seriously. And in, in a way, he didn't take it seriously enough because Eddie, where he take, where did he to take it seriously enough? He would have taken better care of himself and his voice. Like Tony yeah. Bennett's gone on forever because Bennett didn't do anything to ruin that voice. He no, no, he just, uh, yeah, he, just he was Tony. He painted. I yeah. paint pictures instead of doing crack. It's much better for my voice and my head. Did you ever get the feeling that Tony Bennett isn't the brightest man on the planet? <laughs> he was so dumb he thought Vito Powers was an Italian action figure. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Vito Powers? <laughs> <laughs> he, thought, <laughs> he thought Vito Powers was an Italian action star. <laughs> hey, I'm going to paint a picture because if there's anything Tony loves more than singing and swinging, it's painting pictures. <laughs> so, you know, in a way, in a way, you know, these performers that we feel sad about because they died young. They uh -huh. died at their prime, and and when you remember them at their best. Yep. You know, uh, and and uh, so, in, in many cases, it's it's not the worst thing in the world, you know. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, you know, the ones who die in their twenties can make it to fifty. You're well, still good it, when you're fifty, it, then you can die. You know? we still Don't die in your twenties. Die in your fifties. We still remember Marilyn Monroe as this sexy, yep. vibrant woman, right? Yep. She didn't hang around long enough to look like Ginger Rogers did in her oh, 80s. Oh, no. You know? <laughs> she'd, be, she'd be in her 90s now. She'd be dead anyway. I mean, she'd be... Yeah, she'd she be was 36 in, when she, she died. She was starting to get, you know, Hollywood 
what Holly would, would consider old. She, she would have wound up being fat and yeah. trying to preserve her looks you know, all oh, of that right. had she lived. You yeah. know, and then we would have had we would have had a negative impression of Marilyn Monroe because the last time we saw her it was like the last time we saw Ginger Rogers and you said, What happened to yeah. her? You know? Exactly. Exactly. She's not supposed to get old. And she did. Yep, yep, you're supposed to get and old. And if she lived I could see uh, uh Bobby Marilyn's here to see us uh, uh, tell that old bag we're not here where with Angelina Jolie. Uh, you know, gotta J- keep them young. James Dean was another one. You know, the question is, how do you become an icon? Die young. Die very young. And so, <laughs> therefore, the last impression they have of you is that look. You know. Yep, there you not, go. You never lived to be an old, wrinkly, bald. Dean's third failed the trek that attempted the comeback trail, and the blob goes to Cleveland if he lived. Well, I, in San Francisco, I interviewed Mark Frost, who was the creator with David Lynch of Twin Peaks. Uh-huh. And I said, I had a bet with somebody that if James Dean were still alive, you would have hired him to be on Twin Peaks. He said, I would have made him the owner of the lodge. <laughs> he, he didn't even think twice about it. He said, absolutely, yeah. he'd be one of the first people we hired. And that's what James Dean would be doing later on in his career, is Twin Peaks and sure. some TV shows and some lousy movies. And If he'd be working, you know, once they get old, they, a lot yeah. of times they don't want you. He might just be yeah. on a game and, show and, or something. And then you look, at, you look at him and say, can you believe he used to look good? You know, things yeah. like that. <laughs> you should have seen him in the 50s, boy. I mean, Mickey Rooney went from kid actor oh, to, to troll. You know? Yeah, he was like he was like a little homeless guy. Hey, come on, you wanna fight up in your ass? Yeah, exactly. Come on, you son of a bitch, you meet me at the Bowery, have you are give me a drink. <laughs> amazing. Just amazing. But yeah. in other words, it's better if you die in your prime. You know, exactly. That, then you become an icon. If you don't die yep. in your prime, you're not an icon. Exactly, he's just an old person. Oh, I remember him. Wasn't he from the 40s or something? Yeah, I mean, if if, yeah. if James Dean had lived and not died in that crash, probably today he he would not be an icon. You know, I don't. He'd, he'd be a really old guy. <laughs> I don't know what he what he'd be. He probably would have been like a De Niro, a really kick ass actor, and then he would have gotten old and the parts would have stopped. And you know, who knows what he'd be doing? I don't yeah. know that James Dean was that good an actor. Now, I, I, ha- I have a friend of mine who, who discovered, essentially discovered James Dean, uh-huh. uh, and, uh, Jack Garfine. And w- I'm going to do an interview with him about his life after the concentration camps, which was the first interview I did with him. Yeah. And I want to ask him about James Dean, whether he really felt he was a good actor or not, because I never felt I he was a particularly good actor. I thought he was an excellent actor. He just, he just didn't, you know. He put, like him and Dwayne Allman, they got killed the year before they got famous. So it, it's all in the timing. So. Yeah. Uh, he didn't he just, he had, I thought his, he was great in those three movies. And uh, he also has one line in a Martin and Lewis movie, you might not know. Yeah, Sailor so Beware. It, Sailor Beware, in which he is a, a second in a, a boxing match, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I think he says, hey, this guy's a pro or something yeah, like well, that. Yeah, well, I mean, I, 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 watched the that, I watched that movie, and he's not, he doesn't have credit in the film. No. Uh, no, and I line. watched the film. I went, "That's James Dean." Yep, there yeah. he is. Yeah. <laughs> Just a couple of men. Don Wilson was in it too. I wonder if they hung out together. Come on, <laughs> James, let's go and get some checks. Well, he did do a lot of TV in New York before he went out yeah. to Hollywood. He did, you know. Yep. So there is. He a, did. A, he did a TV movie with Ronald Reagan. Really? The Unlighted Road. Yeah, check it out. It's on YouTube. He plays an escaped convict, and his uh, other convict friend was shot. He's dying, and Ronald Reagan's a doctor, and they invade his house. And the fun starts there. My my friend um, Jack was with James Dean the day he they were going in. They were going to go watch some rushes of uh, of giant. Oddly enough, uh-huh. and James Dean shows up with this um, Porsche. I think it was. Was, uh-huh. it, was that what he died in? Was a Porsche? I think. Yeah, the little bastard, number one. And he said, "I'm I'm just going up the coast with this thing." And and Jack oh, said, to him, "Well, be careful. You know, these cars right. can be dangerous." And they're sitting in the screening room. He's sitting in the screening room with Elizabeth Taylor. I shouldn't ruin the story because he'll tell it. And he'll tell it better than I ever could. Uh-huh. He was in the screening room with Elizabeth Taylor, and all of a sudden, somebody comes over and whispers something into her ear. And she starts to scream. Oh my God! And she, the, oh my God! He, she had found out he was dead. 
Yeah. Woo! He was just there, and then he's dead. Oh, man, that's yeah. great. Thank you, Donald Turnip Seed, you son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, but uh, the thing is that we don't know what would have happened to his career. I, I maintain he would not have amounted to much. Yeah, well, I, I think he would have done very well in the 50s and the 60s. It might have started declining in the 70s because he yeah. would have turned, like, 40. And who knows, he could have. He could have been on, like, Petrocelli or, you know, Longstreet or one of those crappy detective shows on ABC. Uh, Who knows? Yeah, or, as I say, on Twin Peaks. You know. Twin Peaks. He could have been a producer or a director. Who knows? He was very very, uh, ambitious. So, uh, you know, who knows? Yeah, well, you know, it all... all We'll never know. When we meet him on the other side, we'll say, hey, get your hands off Sal Mineo and tell me what would have happened. Yeah, but, you know, so that was, you know, he, 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 he was one of those guys you just never know if he would have become the legend that he became, but he became a legend because he died. Yeah, you know, of course. Because he died, and then the movie has gone out. He's a young, good-looking well, cat. He could act in that your, your image, a your image stops at a certain point, and that's the exactly. point at which you're remembered. Forever and, young. And again, I'm you know I refer to uh, Ginger Rogers, who some people are going, "Who's Ginger Rogers?" She used to dance with uh, Fred Astaire in all his movies. Yep. And they used to say, well, he's a great dancer. Uh, what's your talent? She says, I do the same thing in high heels and backwards. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that, girl. <laughs> uh, but uh, she was a uh, you know, <laughs> brilliant answer. Very sexy, blonde, you know, visage. Oh, yeah, sure. It, when she got older, I mean, she just, you, I saw interviews with her, and I just go, oh, my fucking God, you know, this is. Uh, that happens. Look at Kathleen Turner. Some people age well, some people don't age well. It's just, uh, oh, the toss of the old coin. Who knows? Yeah, well, I think some of them don't care. I mean, I don't think, I, I think if Kathleen Turner wanted to remain vibrant. Yep. She would have Get done. the work done, girl. Get the work done. It looks like a wax mannequin like uh, Wayne Newton does now and yeah. uh, Bruce Willis and Melanie Griffith and so many others. Yeah, she would have done it, you know. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, I will never have work done. Never, never, never. N- never, never, never? Never, never, never. Uh, I will just get saggy and die. That's it. No yeah, well, you got to hand it to Keith Richards. He's never had any work done. Oh, God, he looks like a rock and a roll tree, man. <laughs> yeah, he looks, he, actually, I always, I'm glad you refer to him that way. He looks like like an old redwood tree. I know. You want to carve your initials in him sometimes. But no, no, let him play guitar, then carve your initials in him. Still going. Yeah. Every time uh, someone else dies, it adds another year to Keith Richards' life. Yeah, and actually, now, my question is, who looks better? Uh, Mick Jagger, with the work he's had done. <laughs> okay. Or Keith Richards, who obviously has had no work done. I would say Charlie Watts looks better than all of them for one. Well, that's true too. But I mean, <laughs> the thing about Richards is, he's it, when faces get old like that, they they start exuding a certain beauty. At least that's what I'm trying to tell myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, the, the, the X lines become are like experience. Each one represents an experience. It, 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 you, I've had too many goddamn experiences here. You can see. Keith Richards' life in his face, you know. Uh, oh, every every everything that ever happened is amazing. It's yeah, like he's lived it. Yeah, it's like it, he's earned it. Yeah, and if he dies tomorrow, he'll still be a legend. What, what you know? Oh, what a life! What a he'll be a legend. He'll he'll be a guy who dies old and he'll be remembered for. Quite I think a while. He, I think he was just for living that long. <laughs> dare, dare I say this? I think he was more important to the Rolling Stones than Mick Jagger. I don't know. They're both pretty, uh, you know, ham and eggs, uh, bread and butter, all that stuff, black and white. You know, you gotta, you gotta have both. Yeah, yeah. You gotta have both. It wouldn't have worked with one or the other, so they just worked out the way it was supposed to work out. They still, they still, they still turn out albums. They still go on tour occasionally, and they should have stopped a, a while back. Is what? Yeah, they I would have. I think Bill Wyman knew when to get out of it, so you know they still rock. But uh, yeah, they still I don't rock. Want to see but it, 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 it's just like they're repeating themselves. You know? Yeah, what, what's there to prove anymore? Yeah, and I've kind of liked it when I've heard Richards out on his own doing his own stuff, you know, uh-huh. uh, being free of that that image. And there was a point at which I think Jagger tried to do a couple albums on his own too. Oh but yeah, that, she's the boss, and some other one. Yeah, but, uh, that didn't go too well. That didn't no, go no, too no. well. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, I guess uh, you know, uh, he who becomes <laughs> a legend must die young. 
Uh, and not always, yeah. Keith Richards, uh, this old saying that we have to start thinking about what kind of world we're going to leave behind for Keith Richards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that one. <laughs> but it, I don't know who came up with it, but I like it. Makes a hell of a lot of fucking sense. Hey, listen. I saw it on the internet. It must be true. It must be true. Uh, you know, uh, Stephen, you know, always fun talking with you. Always a joy, my friend. I, uh, I wish we were in the same place. We'll have to compromise and meet in Wahoo, Nebraska or something. Do, Hang out. Do you ever get to New York? Not lately. The last time was with, with, with Robin, but uh, someday I'll get back there, you know. Yeah, why'd you, why'd, you, right why'd you come out with Robin? Did you just... He was doing the play. He invited us out to stay with him for a few days, and we did. We did New York things, and we saw the play, and this and that, and then we came home. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Oh, wow. Well, that was very yeah, nice. Yeah, come out. Go stay with him. So it was, it was very nice of him to do that. I think he just wanted some friends around, and we left him alone during the day. and just ran around this stuff, and we saw the play, and hung out with him. And, you know, it was good. And then I did your show then, and then I came home. Ladies and gentlemen. The wonderful Stephen Pearl. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you very much, my friend. We will be talking to you very soon. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Yeah, hold on a second, folks. I'm, I was busy in other rooms doing other things, trying to get things going. And uh, I just did it at the last minute. And then I realized I didn't have a hat on. And uh, I, uh, I didn't have my earphones in. And, but we did it. Well, here we are, folks. Uh, and uh, I don't know what kind of a show we're going to have tonight, to be honest with you. Uh, because uh, Phil isn't going to be here, and neither is Patrick. So, and that doesn't mean that we aren't going to have some good people. But we have to wait and see. If we don't have enough by, say, 11 o'clock... I'm going to go to bed early. <laughs> Got a big day tomorrow. By the way, let me turn on the phones here and see if anybody, I, how can I get them to call if they won't, if the lines aren't open. Okay. The lines are now, the lines are now officially open. Let me see here. Are there, is there anybody out there yet? Uh, none of the people that I normally have on the list here have their lights lit up. So uh, uh, who knows? Who knows? Oh boy, I've been I've been having this you know I've been having this numb feet thing going on. See, the feet don't look unhealthy, I don't think, you know. But uh, uh, they're uh, uh, they're uh, they they, uh, they uh, it hurts, and it hurts a lot when I sit down, and it hurts a lot when I'm walking, and uh, it has something to do, according to the doctor, with a a nerve. Uh, I have uh, arthritis in my spine, and it's pinching a nerve. That's what it, that's what the the literature says. So, I've been dealing with this, and it's not it's not fun. It makes me cranky. Okay, and I I don't want it I don't want it to make me cranky because that's what happens. To, see, you wonder why old people are like gr grouchy. They're not grouch they're grouchy because they're in pain most of the day, with one thing or another. So, you know. But anyway, uh, we need people to call. And uh, if they don't, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I, I, I'm holding out hope that, number one, some of you people out there who never, ever call will call tonight uh, and, and learn how to, what a wonderful experience this is. But learn all the wonders of the experience. Uh, and if you don't know how to get a hold of us, you go over to gabnet.net. That's G A B N E T dot net. Well, here comes Scott Boddicker. We can always count on him. Uh, and, uh, uh, and you go over to gabnet.net, and over on the right hand side of the page is all the information you'd ever need to know about how to, uh, uh, how to uh, uh, be part of the citizen panel. It's that simple, isn't it, Scott? God, it's very simple. God knows you've been doing it for what? How many years now? Three. Three? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Now, yeah. It's a little scary at first. It is. Is how how is it scary? Well, well don't, you're uh, a legend. You are a legend. Yeah, but there there are people, land, man. There are Come on. There are people out there who don't know that I'm a legend, and you know you're only 
I'm I'm a legend to a certain generation. <laughs> okay, it, it, I was talking about that with uh, with Stephen Pearl about how you know people like James Dean are legends to a certain amount of people. But the guy only did three movies, <laughs> you know, and then he died, and his image was written in history. You know, you didn't get to see him get old or anything else. You know, so how old uh, was he when he died? Like twenty four, twenty five, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so I'm I'm grouchy tonight. My back is killing me. I got a thing back here. My back is hurting me. You got arthritis. No, you ever get no, you ever get a, a backache, and then it just goes on for days and days and days, and then then it seems like it's getting better, and then you go to sleep one night and you wake up and it's all torqued again. Yeah. 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 And well, tomorrow I'm going to the physical therapist, but that's for my feet, not for my back. So, you know. Well, it, maybe I'll you have still to your back to get the. Uh, to get the thing, the, the, the nerve, right? Well, the you nerve is the, ner the ner nerve is at the base of my spine. Yeah, so he's going to have to, you know, you're going to have to do some stretches or torques or what? I don't know what, but yeah. Whatever he's going to do. I don't know. Yeah. I've, well, I've, I've, I'm sure you'll tell us what he's going to do. I went to this guy for my meniscus, my torn meniscus. And he kind of, for the most part, I mean, it's still every now and then it acts up a little bit, you know, but he, he, he took care of it. I got better. You know, did it grow back? Did it? Uh... No, it that never gets better. I always it have it. You yeah. know, I if I if I some nights if I sleep like with my leg in the wrong position or something, I'll wake up the next morning. And go, oh boy, the meniscus is bothering me. Okay. But then I get wake up and I walk around. And it, it takes care of itself. But um, so anyway, but, what? I, I was going to say, but but you still are alleged. I mean. I only knew you from Sirius. I didn't know you from the uh, obviously your coastal work. Yeah, so you but, uh, you only knew me from Sirius. Yeah, and uh, and did you like that show? I loved it. Really? I loved it. Yeah, I can never can figure out what Sirius didn't like about it. I I don't either. I mean, obviously uh, we we got uh, Sirius because my my wife just loves Howard Stern, so we got it and, and listened to it, but. You know, after, you know, a couple of three, four years, Howard Stern, he just got boring, I thought, you know. I, you know, the way he, his whack pack group and all that other stuff. And then I found you one time and I said, hey, this is pretty good. So I started yeah. listening to you instead yeah. of Howard. So. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Well, it's nice that we, you got to know me through that. Did you ever call yeah. me on that show? Uh, I think once. Once. Okay. Once. And yeah. I was, I was, I don't even want to. I don't, I don't even want to recall. I mean, I know you don't remember it and whatnot, but it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. I was, it, it was just after you got fired and whatnot. And I was really upset about it and everything like that. And I talked to Albert and whatnot. Oh, too, and you, uh, oh, really? Oh, you mean it was yeah. after I got fired? I announced I well, was getting we, fired. We knew you were leaving. We knew you were. Uh, they didn't walk you out right away, right? No, no they gave you about a month. Uh, they were. They were actually. I have to say this. Most of the time when they fire you at places, they go, don't come in tomorrow. Right. Because they don't want somebody on the air who's disgruntled. But they trusted me enough and said, we'll give you a couple of weeks to say goodbye to everybody. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so I at least got the ability to do that. The problem with it all was I was still unemployed. <laughs> and I'm still unemployed to this day. So, right. you know. But so but, am I. And, yeah. And bitter? A tad. <laughs> you know. Me too. Me too. I mean, I love my job. I just, you know, it just, it, it, uh, you know, we, they didn't need me anymore. You know what? You, you, well, at least you had some kind of answer, didn't you? You knew why they were letting you go. It was, it was just business. It was just business. Just business. That's all they said. Just business. Uh, not I, personal. I never got a reason. Yeah. I was just told it's not my fault. Yeah, well, and I'm going. Well, I really yeah. wish I knew it was my fault. Then I'd have somebody to blame. <laughs> you know, but when they go, it's not your fault. Well, apparently, the, I was doing something didn't make you want me to come in on Monday. You know, and I got the feeling it was somebody higher up that you know just had a hard on, and that was it. You know, so you're frozen. I think. Are you there? Scott, oh, that. Having some bandwidth issues. Yeah. Well, you, plus, I don't know what. You don't have any kids playing video games in the house, do you, anymore? Nope. 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 Uh, nope. No kids. Uh, Nobody uh, here. Uh, 
me and my wife. Yeah. She's watching TV. And she, yeah, she's not using a vibrator or anything like that that might slow down the bandwidth. She, she doesn't need it tonight. Yeah. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if they have such things as digital vibrators. Yeah. Yeah, it's called a finger. No. Uh, <laughs> you know where? Oh yeah. God, my God, I can't get enough bandwidth to Skype here because my wife's using her digital vibrator. <laughs> With her Skype friends, yeah. so no, I uh, being fired is uh, is one of the most what's what's the word I'm looking for here? One of the most uh, dep- it, it just makes you just feel like shit. Yeah, you know, well, it, it's happened many times to you, right? I meant like, like maybe four or five, six. Well, you know, a part of the reason why I always wound up getting fired is I usually never wound up quitting. Okay, but I did have some situations where I left because I had a better job offered me somewhere else, you okay. know. So on my way up, I had le- I was fired infrequently. I, oh. In fact, I think it was only until I got to New York that I got fired. And, and that firing was like, uh, that made me famous, that firing. Uh, and uh, so I, uh, you know, then I then I got used to getting fired, you know, because mainly, well, mainly because when I when I I found a place in a situation I liked, you know, where I was comfortable, uh, I just didn't leave, you know, uh, yeah. and and so consequently, the only way out the front door was if somebody kicked me out it, so that happened a couple of times. And then in San Francisco, I quit twice. Oh, to go okay. somewhere else. I was on the way up again. And I, I, I quit one place, and they tried to prevent me from quitting, and they were not successful in that. And then uh, I was in another situation in which it was a very strange situation in which the pro- station changed hands. And so they didn't want me to do my talk show in the morning, but I had it in my contract that I had complete creative control over when I, what went out on, on my program. So they had to figure out some way to get me out of there, and they couldn't. They couldn't figure. They had a contract in which they had to continue to pay me for I think the better part of two years. At at that time, it was like at about one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars a year, and that was a lot of money back then. It is today too. Yeah. Um, so somebody at another station came along and said, "I'll take him off your hands." Uh, 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 we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll do a deal here, like uh, okay. they do in in football. And what I'll do is I'll bring him onto my station, and I'll pay half his salary. Oh, and you okay. can continue to pay the other half. Yeah, you know, up until the end of his contract. And they said okay, and they said, but here's uh, here here's a, here's even a better deal we're going to make you. If he gets the same ratings he got at your station. The day those ratings come in, we'll pick up the entire 100% of his salary. And, oh. and these other people, thinking they were really smart businessmen, they were kind of like, I guess they had read Donald Trump's books on doing business, <laughs> said, no way we're going to do that. We're not taking a chance on that. We're not making a bet. We want you just to pay the half. Said, okay, I'll pay the half. First book that came out, I not only beat my numbers, I, I uh, met, equaled my numbers, but I beat them. And these, <laughs> and these guys had to keep paying me yeah. half my salary for the rest of the contract. So that, that, yeah, that was one of the one of the hey. better deals, you know, somebody got for me. You were good. I didn't care. I got and I got two checks. I got a check from the one place. I got a check from the, from the from the new place. And you had an agent. Work that deal for no, you? Or? No, 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 no. This guy, the general manager of the station, came to me and said, "I'd like you to go to work for us." And I said, "He said, here's my idea." And he went to them, and then he negotiated the whole thing. You know, uh, I didn't get an agent till way later, and that was the biggest mistake of my life because I he didn't do shit for me. <laughs> you know, uh, when it came time to negotiating my contract, they they didn't want to pay me a lot more than they were paying me. And he wasn't that aggressive. So my business manager said, I got an idea here. What you do is you like him to do live, bro- live ads on the air, right? And the, the sponsors loved it when I did a live read mm-hmm. for them because I, I sold product, okay? 
So I said to him, um, okay, um, um, uh, he, my business manager said, we'll take the money you want to give them, which was just a slight raise over what I was getting in my old contract. But we want you to pay him $50 every time he does a live read. And you can make up for that just by charging the advertiser the additional $50 for him doing the live read. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. It got to a point where I was doing $200 worth every morning, five days a week. Yeah. And that was like 52000 maybe it's sometimes about $60,000 more a year added to my yeah. income. Yeah, because I good. because I was doing the live reads, so that was cool. I, oh, and then I also had it in my contract that it, I did I did a lot of these comedy concerts, and that I could plug them all for free. I could just oh. you know push them on my show like crazy, and every one of them would sell out. Usually, sometimes within hours of the tickets going on sale. So I pulled in another oh hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year doing that. So by the nice. time I was through, I was walking out of there with about four hundred thousand dollars a year, you know. And and no, and the agent, all he got me was this slight raise. And then when they finally wanted me to go, he negotiated for the guy who was going to replace me. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Which I he was knew. a double agent, you might say. Yeah, he was a double agent, exactly. By the way, people, somebody, anybody want to call? You know, I I'll just sit here with Scott, and we can. Uh, Oh, well, if, if you if you want to go, I just want to give you something no, to talk. No, I don't. To I don't. I, I don't want to go. I see Jeff is coming online. No, uh, I don't. If you want to shut down, don't don't hang on for me. I no, would no. I would stay here for the whole rest of the show just with you. Oh, that's that's very nice of you. To yeah, say. yeah. Uh, it, by the way, uh, uh, you know we don't have we don't have Phil here tonight, which is I know that's why I called her. Well, well that's a good reason to call. Uh, it, but it, uh, Jeff, are you there? Jeff? Oh, well, we just lost Jeff. Oh, no, no, now here he is. There's Jeff. And now we're waiting for Scott to come back. There's Scott. Oh, now we got yeah. both of them together. Um, uh, uh, did you, uh, have you been checking in on, on our boy Trump lately? Did you, you, you didn't hear the breaking news a uh, half hour ago, did you? No, what? Oh, it was uh, the New York Times released a story that oh, says in 2017 yes two two weeks before trump was uh, inaugurated like in january of 6th or so yeah. he was given irrefutable information that vlad putin ordered all this cyber stuff yeah yeah, yeah i saw that oh you did see that yeah. okay and and and, and uh, so he was he was over he already knew about it hi there ray ray's out walking hey, his Alice. dog again there he is. Uh, no no dog right now because i'm walking to the gym you're walking to the gym oh okay yeah then, yeah anyway uh, yeah, uh, uh it is just it is amazing to me what a fucking liar this guy has turned out yeah. to be i yeah. mean and i'm saying turned out to be because in in no one's imagination would you Imagine a scenario in which somebody would lie this openly, and this, yeah. you know, uh, and and every day he changes his story. You know, and, and I can't believe that even the people who are for him are stupid enough to follow him through all of this. You but said Rand that. Paul. Stupid. Rand Paul, yeah, Rand Paul, he he sucked up to Trump, didn't he? Oh my God, it's so disgusting. <laughs> There's no shame whatsoever. No, you know what guy. it is about Rand Paul. Sometimes I cheer Rand Paul. Sometimes he says something or does something, and I go, "Good for you, Rand. I agree with you." But then sometimes he does things just to be ornery. He knew that everybody was going to say Trump sold us out, you know, to Putin. And so he was going to be the one who was going to defend him, you know, just because he has to be the contrarian. You know, if yeah. you say it's a beautiful day yeah. out today, uh, Rand will find a way to prove to you that it isn't. And yeah. if you say it's a, like, it, what? Uh, isn't this yeah. the worst rainstorm you've ever seen? And he'll try and tell you it's sunny outside. That's just <laughs> the way he is. Yeah. It's like, you're not looking at the big picture. And you have to put these things in context. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, I guess he's right in a way, you yeah. know, actually. But 
he, he refuses to see what's staring him in the face just to be contrarian, like you say. Yeah. I mean, Trump, Trump, Trump is a typical thing where, you know, when someone lies a lot, they say the more they lie, the more they have to lie. And eventually they start to look like a complete fool because they can't keep up with all their lies and it just yeah. never ends. And then, well, you know, the trouble the is, truth is it, obvious. It, 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 someone once said the hardest thing to do is to lie. Because when you lie, yeah. you have to remember how you, you have to be consistent in your lying, and it's impossible to lie and be consistent. Yeah. You know, you have to remember every nuance of your lie in order to maintain that lie. Yeah. Like he forgot about the fact that he had actually asked the Russians to break, hack into Hillary's server yeah you know he obviously has had forgotten about that well so. I, you know i'm gonna give him i'm gonna give him something okay and that is that maybe he meant that as a joke yeah you know, uh, you but know he always says that it's a you know, joke. I'm, maybe he meant it as a joke but it's come back to bite him in the ass because it happened on the day that the what the fbi or the cia or somebody found out that for sure the hacking was going on yeah you know and and well, when, yeah, when you're president, you have to be careful about what you say, and he's never careful because everybody listens to every little word you that comes out of your mouth. Well, and I, you, you just can't be so flippant. Yesterday was the best, uh, <sighs> the best uh, excuse for something I've seen him do yet, where he wanted to actually change one word to change <laughs> everything. And, and, and it kind of reminded me of Bill Clinton when he was in that deposition. <laughs> and what was the what was the line? It is what your definition of uh, is, is is. is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It had yeah. to do with blowjobs. Yeah, like like. Well, or if you sex. receive a blowjob, yeah. then you're th then you are not having an affair. Because but if you give one, then you are. I mean, that's what, that was his. That was his yeah. But it, it was. It, it, it all matters. It matters what you mean by is or what is is. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, all I could think yeah. of it was that when he when Trump was going off on this whole deal with uh, with <laughs> uh, well, I didn't say would, I meant wouldn't. Well, wait a minute. It's a double negative sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know who gave him that excuse to come up with. It had to be hit. Oh, oh, they said it was the two Mikes. Mike Pompeo and Mike Pence came up with that idea. They came up with that idea? That's yeah. the best thing they could come up that's with? That's what I heard uh, somewhere. Yeah. You know, I don't think those two guys are idiots. Did they really come up with this? Or did, or, or does Trump come up with this stuff and he doesn't want to have anything to do with, you know, he, 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 I'm going to show you what a brainiac I am. I've come up with a great excuse on this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I, one of these guys, I'm waiting for the first guy like Pompeo or one of these guys. Hello, John Rockwell. How are you? Nice to see you. Um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the first one of these guys who just quits because he can't take it anymore. <laughs> I mean, you see these guys when they go to meetings with him and stuff, and the looks on their faces when he started when he started taking off on our allies at at breakfast. The look on their faces yeah. was priceless, just priceless. What are we? What, what's happening with John Rockwell? Why are we getting uh, your, your your beard? Okay, there we go. Remember that uh, that woman who was one of his closest advisors that really. That one that used to be a supermodel or something, she oh, just up and quit. Dicks. She just, Dicks. yeah, Dicks. she just yeah. couldn't okay. take it anymore. Yeah. Well, he yelled at her. Wait she a just, yeah. Hold yeah, on a second. Just is, up and quit, man. Is John? Are you having audio <sighs> problems? Yeah, I didn't have the I didn't have the mic up. Can oh, you hear me now? Oh, now you're fine. Yeah, like now me. you're fine. I'm yeah. okay. Yeah. Not too loud. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. A guy sitting in his own studio can't get his audio to us, but a guy walking down the street is coming in perfectly clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I had Technology. I didn't have it plugged in. That's the problem. You, know, no. I was, you don't have Phil's board. I'll tell you problem. about it in a second. I was running off tapes and I found an interesting one that I'm sending sending to you at some point. When you have a chance you know, well, somewhere in here when there's a break. I'll tell you about it because it's fascinating okay, stuff. Okay, we'll get Very back, we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, meanwhile, we're discussing yeah. this. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got this guy. This guy is just, I mean, it's amazing. It is just amazing what has happened with him. And, and, and his, whole, his whole 
attitude in life about why he the thing is i think what he is about this whole thing of russia um, rigging the election is he wants to feel he won fair and square he won't even admit he got three million less votes okay but the yeah. last thing he wants to admit is that well it got rigged well for whatever reason you're president now do the best job you possibly can and while you're at it, don't w live in Obama's shadow, for Christ's sake. His, his weak ego won't let him make the distinction between the Russians meddling in our election and him becoming president because of meddling. I mean, they're two separate things. And he should be, he should be defending our country against any type of infiltration by a foreign e power. Exactly. You know. Regardless of whether or not he won or lost because of it. But he I, cannot make that distinction. If he can't I, do it. If I found out that I had lost an that I had won an election because the election was rigged by some outside source, and I found out about it, I would go to the American public and say, I found out that my election was in part because of the, the there was a certain rigging that was going on and an <coughs> a, a, a interference by a foreign government. And uh, while I'm not going to resign because of that, because there's still some question as to how much interference there was, I just wanted to let you know, but I'm going to try and be the best president I can and not feel, have any of you feel disappointed that I got elected president. You know? That's oh what you do. God. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, well, <laughs> that, that's never going to happen. I'm writing a science fiction yeah. novel, and uh, <laughs> the only thing that's missing are some Martians. You know? <laughs> oh, it would be the easiest damn thing on earth to do too yeah. and like all of a sudden there would be more people liking him but he won't do it yeah <clears throat> yeah uh, jeff how you doing what you got something to add to any of this i i am so happy that trump is is getting caught yeah. every day do you think though that that he's going to he's getting caught in a way that will be beneficial to us or do you think he's getting caught and eventually he'll just slide that's the problem is is i i think uh he's going to be here for his whole four years of uh job i don't think he's going to uh leave and I don't think anybody else is going to be able to kick him out. So that's the, the bad part. The question I is... Think, yeah, anybody else wants to... I think, you know, I think he has a good chance of getting reelected unless the Democrats come up with a really good uh, candidate. Well, I'm here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'd vote for it. You know, I'm here. And, 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 and by the way, uh, I have so many... Um, um, skeletons in my closet <laughs> that uh i'm that are available uh, uh, the, the last thing i am is corrupt you know <laughs> yeah but make yeah. america skeletal again <laughs> yeah but i mean you know I, I i was a single guy for a long time that puts me in in, in that category you know uh yeah but i i i just i just think it's, it's just so you if, if you'd written this, nobody would have believed you. I'd be thrown out of a Hollywood studio for writing a script like this. You know. <laughs> wasn't wasn't there a film, uh, Chris Rock, who it was like a, who played like a comedian who runs for the presidency and gets it. Yeah. But then he actually well, realizes he has he actually comes out being all right. But it's uh, the whole idea of well, wait a minute, you know? <laughs> now what do I do? Well, <laughs> I think that was part remember being there. Well, yeah. I think that was yeah, part of. Yeah, I, I think that was part of the scenario with Trump. I don't think he expected to win. Mm -hmm. You know, no. uh, and uh, I think that was the last thing he expected. What he thought he he was planning already on starting a news network. You know, I mean, he was planning on stuff that he was going to do after the election was over, and he didn't win it. Um, mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, that didn't happen. And now he's, he woke up the next morning and said, my God, you know, it's like, I felt it was like it, it was a remake of the producers. Mm -hmm. You know, how can we run an election so bad? How, how can we make every mistake possible? 
uh, you know, between the Access Hollywood tapes and the things he said and the things he was purporting and the way he was acting. Let's do everything we can do to lose. And then when we lose, we will have made a lot of money by losing. All right. And, yeah, and, and, right. and so for Hitler. And <laughs> it, yeah. And and where he, where he is now placed himself is in that part of the play where they go, where do we go right? You know, mm-hmm. what What do we do? Because we <laughs> exactly. made every mistake you could make and not get elected. And now look at me. I'm waking up in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Lincoln bedroom or wherever the president sleeps. I don't think he sleeps in Lincoln bedroom, but you're right. Yeah, Lincoln bedroom. It's like zero Mustel as president. That's for special <laughs> guests. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Except you'd rather have uh, Max Bialystok as president than Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Max grabbed a few women by you know where too. Yes, he did. But they were old ladies, old lady and they appreciated it. Lady. Yes, they wanted to be though. Yes, Jeff. I, I'm looking forward to what when Clinton writes her her new book about mm-hmm. what happened to her. Well, you know, of course, you know, it's the thirty thousand emails. What happened to them? What I would hate to be the guy who has to go through those 30,000 emails. Half, 99.9% of them are probably like, what do you want to do for lunch? <laughs> you know. I want to know where the Pakistani gentleman went. <clears throat> What's the Pakistani gentleman? I heard something about Don't it. Don't you hear Trump? No. Yeah, the Pakistani, Trump was like, and where is the Pakistani gentleman who, who has the two servers? Oh, oh, you didn't hear that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and and by the way, where's all your proof that Obama was raised in Kenya? You know, know, the unfortunate part about Obama was this week he gave a very good speech. I don't know if any of you saw part of it, but it was a really terrific speech. But unfortunately, he made it in Kenya. (laughs) And and that only gives adds ammunition, you know. My neck is killing me today. My back is killing me. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm a mess. But I go to the physical therapist tomorrow, so we'll see what happens. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you go. You're in the gym now. I can tell you're in the gym, Ray. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. You should, you should stop exercising. That's probably why your back hurts. You know something? <laughs> I'm thinking about quitting for a week. I really am. Because uh, today I was sitting there and I was pedaling away. And I always go, I'm only going to do 20 minutes. And then I wind up doing 25 or 30, right? Yeah, and, and maybe you should change it up and do something else, you know, just so you get some mixture, well, some cross training. I, I go and do some of the implements of torture, not many. Oh, okay. I do a sit-up thing, and I do uh, I do a thing for my uh, my meniscus, and uh, you know, I'll yeah. do a couple of things, and then I'll leave after that. But maybe I should maybe I should do something else besides the bike, you know. Um, it might be a little bit too repetitive, you know, repetitive motion injuries. You can get them on a bike pretty easy. Really? Yeah. But because it, you're always doing the same exact thing every single well, day. Why would my back and unless, get torqued out from doing that? Mm-hmm. Uh, back problems are on bicycles are big, are very common. Why? Because, because you're, you're hun- bent over. Be- yeah. Uh, and sometimes you hold your shoulders too tight. Sometimes your your uh, yeah. the muscles between your shoulder blades need to be yeah. strengthened. The physical therapist will figure it out. Yeah. Well, I went uh, three days. Yeah. Uh, I went three days this week uh, to work out. Well, actually, I, you know, I went about four days in a row. Actually, I went. I think I went Sunday too. Uh, and I, okay. I, I today I was thinking maybe I should maybe not do it for a week, you know, and then get back into it. And maybe just limit myself to a couple of days a week. You know. Walking's really good too. Just well, yeah. alternate with walking. Yeah, yeah. So what? What are you going to get on a device of manip- uh, torture there? I, I'm going to go on the bike. You're going to go on. I've the been bike. actually riding my actual bike quite a bit outside. Yeah, that's a lovely day for it. <laughs> yeah. Today I just too, I was too tired. Yeah, you kind of it's too, too late. late. Yeah. 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 What, can you yeah. can you show us a picture of what the bicycle looks like? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, let, me, let me see if I can turn this around here. Uh, Let's see here. There we, there we go. go. Oh, there's there's uh, the implements of torture. Oh, oh. So you have that's oh, kind yeah, of like of uh, yeah. It's a spinner. 
Yeah. It's a spinner, it's and then and then do you have some Sorry, readouts? Do you have yeah. some readouts there? No, no, it's just the regular. You no, know, it's just there's the handlebars. Oh, I see. Okay, because I have readouts yeah. for my heart rate, which I never. Oh, I, see, I have. I look oh, over. No, they have that here. They have that here. I look over yeah. right here, yeah. but, but I use my watch. Win! I, wow. I look <laughs> over at other people who are using the bikes like I am, and uh, they're going at the same speed I am, and uh, they've got the heart rate up around. Uh, I've got my heart rate up around a hundred. I look over at them. They're going like bunny rabbits. They got like 150 as their heart rate. <laughs> now, well, how do you get your heart rate up? Well, it depends on age. So your maximum heart rate decreases the older you get. Really? Yeah. yeah. Really? I don't know why. It just does. It sucks. Well, yeah. yeah, getting old sucks, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but for some reason, your maximum heart rate goes down. Every single year, like after you're 25 or something. Although Jeff is an example of why getting old doesn't suck. You look like you're pretty happy with being your, the well, age you are. What? Torture. <laughs> <laughs> well, like Betty Davis said, getting old ain't for sissies. No, it isn't. I, t I tell you, the one thing that I have recently yeah. is I got a trainer coming in a couple of days a week yeah because uh we're going to this trip to italy yeah and i figured i, I gotta walk uphill and downhill and, well, and I, I got any, a bunch of grandkids going with me i don't have any trouble walking up hills and downhills but i've got this numbness in my feet that makes them hurt in shoes a lot and so i don't i you know i'm sure i could walk a lot but my feet would be trashed after i was through so I got to get I got to get this thing fixed. Whether it means having an operation on my spine, which will then leave me, of course, like Patrick, oh, uh, you know. Uh, but I've got to get that nerve away from this uh, arthritic spinal stenosis or whatever that I've got in there. So maybe you if believe you the ads. Yeah. What? Care of if I believe. Can you become younger? Yeah. <laughs> What were you saying about the... Uh, well, I would say if you believe the ads you see on afternoon TV, just less than an inch of uh, yeah. incision in the yeah. back of the spine, I, I, and you'll be I, up and walking. I, in believe the, it or yeah, not, I, I look closely at those ads. Sure. It, <laughs> we all do it. You right? know. But just, There's so many of them for every for all the ads now. La like Laser, Laser Spine Institute. Laser, That's yeah, the name of it. Is, Laser Spine Institute. Yeah. 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 Just a little incision in the back of yours, like yeah, okay, yeah, yeah okay, sure. A little incision in your forehead, you'll forget your a little incision. A little, little, uh, a little uh, incision in your forehead, and you'll forget your second marriage. Exactly. You know, little Botox. Or, or, yeah. Little strip handling. Whatever, yeah. You know, that sort of stuff. Now you Jeez. say you found a tape with me on it. Oh yes. No, this was one of those. To me. You know, only in New York sort of thing. Yeah. One of the things that I do at home, uh, I, I, a couple of these old used record stores around the city yeah. uh, have me listed if somebody wants to take a tape or something and digitize it. Yeah. And somebody called me, this guy Dylan, called me and said, I've got some tapes, the little tapes that we made when I was a kid and all that. And I've got tapes of my dad and my mom who was a singer oh. and all this stuff, you know. So I said, oh, yeah, yeah bring them over, bring yeah, them over. Okay. So... Because he wanted he, first, we want to listen, make sure there's something he wanted. Right. The singing was beautiful, and he said my mother was a Broadway singer until she married my dad. So in the 20s, she was like in the broad, original Broadway cast of The Sound of Music as one of the nuns. You know, the, and she had, and she sounded great. Not in the 20s. Piano. You mean but, in the in the 50s? Oh, yeah. 50. I'm out 50s. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Because they're both, both mom and dad, I think, are dead at this point. But yeah. but it's when he when he when he brought out a tape of his father and it said it was from July of 1970 and it said Sid on WMCA and I listened I forgot his last name was Bernstein it's Sid like, Bernstein Sid Bernstein it's his it's his son Dylan one of his sons they had a, he had a few kids and it was Sid Bernstein and Michael Goldstein talking about the Powder Ridge uh, Rock Festival and talking about how the, the, the you know what it would never have another Woodstock and all that stuff. And it's really only part of the of the time of of the interview. 
it's really awful shape. You can you can sort of it's not really that easy to hear, but because I think what he did is he had a it was a little three inch reel. I think he bought his own little little deck there, and it's just yeah. It may have been may have been they may have plugged it into the you know I don't know what it was. It it, it just doesn't sound well, like it was Sid, taken well, off the radio. Let's put this in perspective for people. Sid Bernstein. Oh my was God. maybe one of the biggest promoters in in New York. He was the guy sure. that first the brought the seventies. He was the guy yeah. that brought the, the Beatles. Beatles to Shea yeah. Stadium. Oh yeah, yeah. And he, he worked on he worked on concerts, festivals. Uh, thing. I remember. I didn't know. I mean, I got here in the seventies and eighties, especially, and he was still promoting things. You'd see his ads in the Village Voice. It'd be Sid Bernstein, the, the man who brought the Beatles to America. Now bringing you know. Uh, uh, Steely Dan, <laughs> it's just something. Yeah. He'd always, he'd always. These ads would always be in the, you know, in the in in the Village Voice music section or the concert section, and it was always promoting himself too. Yeah, and I don't know who Michael Goldstein is, and actually Dylan didn't either. But I think he was one of the people involved with Sid in this. In in a Michael, I'm trying to remember who Michael Goldstein was. In, in, at the end, also they're going. They'd say, well, later we'll talk about. What we're doing at Shea Stadium. Well, so were, I guess they, were, they, some... were they promoting the Powder Ridge Festival? Yeah. Because well, if were, I remember well, the Powder Ridge Festival, it turned out to be one of the biggest failures of all time. In <laughs> fact, I said it was a perfect example of what if you held a festival and nobody came? Nope. <laughs> well, as the interview is mostly, it's only a bit of the interview. It's it's about 20, I mean, it's two sides is about, about 15 minutes on each side, but it's you. It's I'm starting talking about, like you know, the Yippies said they wanted a free festival, but you know if you do that, then you know who's gonna, you know the band needs to be bands need to be paid, the venue needs to be paid. You know you can't make it a free festival. You're not gonna, you know. Well, how about what's that? Well, Woodstock, you know they they it got they it ended well, up being Wood, one because Woodstock, so many people showed up. Woodstock was the biggest Set up mistake. Set five hundred thousand, you get two hundred fifty thousand. Woodstock you know. was the biggest mistake of all time. Oh, they say the same thing on here. Yeah, uh, but, you know, but but it, because it was such a colossal clusterfuck, mm -hmm. it had commer it, it, it the filming they were doing had commercial value, and the recording they did had certainly commercial the film value. and the, yeah the film and the record yeah. went all over but, the place. But but prior to that, I mean, I was there when finally Bill Graham Bill Graham suggested they build a moat and set it on fire, and that would keep people from coming <laughs> in. <laughs> and, there you go. and they were trying right. to figure out how to stop this influx of people because it was like I was there and it was already what about a half a million people there and supposedly there were still a million on their way and we had mm -hmm. they had to say go home don't come we're not hey, letting anybody up? else in and it turned into as I say this huge clusterfuck Mm -hmm. which after it was all over and everybody came down off their individual drugs and they saw the mess oh, that they the had on their yeah. hands, they suddenly realized they also had been filming the thing and they'd been recording the thing and the thing had gotten to be big news and a major sociological event. And mm -hmm. really when they made the money was after the fact. But they oh, made, yeah. they lost money big time on the festival itself. I mean, you oh, for, sure. you forget it was called the Woodstock Festival, but it was held Music in Art it, it, it was held in Bethel, New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, why wasn't it in Woodstock? Well, because they the city of Woodstock said, "Uh, uh, you're not doing the festival here," and kicked them out right. weeks beforehand, and they had to move to this Max Yasger's farm, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. uh, in Bethel. Ooh. And, and Were any of you there? I was there. Were you there, Al? Yeah. Was there. Oh. I, I, actually, I was just a little kid. <laughs> I actually had a car on the premises. Um, I was allowed to bring a car in. Uh, there you go. And and so I and I was in the press tent and you know I was in it was comfortable for me, you know. Um, but I had to leave after one night because uh, one day one eve one day. Because I had to get back to New York to do my radio show because the radio station wouldn't let me put a line into the Woodstock Festival, which I had the rights to do. They said I could do it so I could do my show from there, which if they had put a line in there, they could have made a fortune that weekend by suddenly doing reports to the rest of the country from the Woodstock Festival. Right. Uh, so I had to go back to New York and Paul Krasner had to go back to New York, so I drove him back. And the reason he had to go back is he needed, he wanted to get laid. 
and he was going. He was going with this TV star, this TV soap opera star, uh, and um, uh, so we 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 left uh, after about uh, being there for most of the first day. You know, yes. My friend uh, was there. Yeah, and he's still there. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> he's still. He lives in Woodstock now. <laughs> <laughs> never left. Yeah, never left. He never left. Never left. Yeah. I, I, I was watching back home in Chicago. I had friends, the college friends of mine, that were said, "Oh, we're going to this thing because they they lived in New England or lived around." So we're going to go. It's one of you should come. I'm like, well, I don't know. I got to work and whatever. I was doing, you know. So I see the I see this the the reports on TV and I'm like. Boy, am I glad I'm not there. All that mud and rain and, and, and half a million people crushing in. Where do you go to the bathroom? It's, oh, God, I'm so glad I didn't do it. Of course, then when I get back to college in the fall, the two or three people that did go were like, you know, we've seen God. <laughs> yeah, we were at Woodstock. You know, they heard Hendrix. You know, I mean, I yeah. understand that, but I, no. I'm, I was I'm very glad I didn't go. I was in back of the main stage. They had a tent. They had a yeah. press tent. And I was hanging out with Abby. And mm. Jerry Rubin, and I think maybe it was Phil Oaks there. I can't remember. We're all, we're all, I love telling this story. I've told it a dozen times, but it's always worth telling. Uh, we're, we're back in the press tent, and Abby's back there, and we're all stoned out of our fucking minds, and we're, you know, joking with each other. All of a sudden, this really straight reporter mm. from, it appeared to be, I think, the, the New York Daily News, which was in a very conservative paper stands up and says, one of you, I need a quote from an average concert goer about what you think about this. You. Oh and he God. points to Abby. <laughs> right. And he says, give me a quote. He says, okay, I'll give you a quote. You know, he's talking his Boston accent. He says, uh, this is the greatest event since the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> <laughs> now, the funny part about this is, the guy the wrote writer, it down, probably. The right? writer doesn't bat an eyelash. He starts typing. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it got in. I don't think it did. He didn't did. know who he was asking. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my, my screen froze. The greatest event since what? What did he say? Oh, it was? The my, Kennedy assassination. the Kennedy assassination. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, remember, Alex, back in the Midnight Blue days, one of our... Speak your peace questions was where did you lose your virginity? Well, speak your and peace. Our friend let's, Gene, let, you know, wait a minute. Said, let's, let's, I lost it. Yeah, go ahead. Well, first, let me say that speak yeah. your peace wait, was wait, a wait, segment wait. we did, in which uh, we would ask a group of people a, a, a sex question. How we did it though was we would invite twenty people in on an evening. We would put out a spread of food, and then we'd sit down with each of them and ask each of them about five questions, and then we'd spread them out over five weeks. You know, so everybody would be answering the same question, but we did five weeks worth of work in one evening. Oh yeah. Okay. But, so, so the question and, and a lot that of them we were friends or, or friends of friends would come in or something like that. And, and we had Gene some was somebody who, that we knew yeah. from, you know, whatever. But and we had some who were real. We had some who were real characters too. Some real characters. Oh, you bet. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and they literally became stars through this this mm -hmm. segment, which was called "Speak Your Peace." Or and uh, the, e i e c e of course yeah yeah and the question <laughs> the question was um uh where's the most unusual place you ever had sex and, Un unusual and, that's it and jean melizia yeah i so it's like she i remember this oh do, do you know I she, do you know I she, remember she, right she said, by, I, by the way you I know think she, she said she lost her virginity there but in the back of a lime green dodge super v at the woodstock music and arts festival <laughs> <laughs> like whoa really yeah yeah, I found out I mean, that was pretty. That was pretty far. That was pretty uh, unusual. No, but I'm she, thinking, geez, you know, Krasner didn't have to go go down to D.C. or down to Wash to New York to get laid. I mean, God, there are all these. Well, he was know, in love with this. He was in love with the soap women opera. There, you know? The soap opera star. I'm trying to remember her name. Beth. Beth something. That's Beth. Okay. Beth something <laughs> or another. And she was. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, uh, Jean, uh, by the way, died a while. Yeah, back. a few years back. You told me in a uh, bike accident. Somebody ran her over on her bike. Yeah, um, 23rd Street or something I, like I that. I always get especially yeah. depressed when I find out uh, people who died who I had sex with. <laughs> well, they're that too. You know, it, there's just I something like, kind of weird. Does any, it, 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 uh, Scott, well, you're Catholic. You never have sex. Uh, 
<laughs> well, people, she was somebody who died who I wanted to have sex with. It didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we went out a couple of times with uh, just just to, as a friends, just going to things with Bob and other people, and then she he'd be she'd be part of the group. But then every you know she didn't she wind sort up being, went, didn't she wind up she, being a policeman or something like that? No, she was a taxi driver. Taxi driver lived on lived on lived on uh, in in uh, Alphabet City on like yeah. like two and B or something like that. Yeah. And I think I one time dropped her off there because she came to visit us in in Brooklyn and. You know, and 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 had lunch or something, and then you know, so, so yeah, you know, and she lived up 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 north. Uh, she lived a couple of places around the yeah, city, yeah. wherever she could find. But she, she interesting. But, but she died by what? Getting run over by a car? She got, she got she got run over. She went on her bicycle. I saw the, I know better or something. She she got somewhere on Twenty Third Street. You know, like, um, you know, was going somewhere, and uh, she got sideswiped by a. A truck or something and didn't survive. Wow! And that happens a lot, you know, in this city. It it's became not... a cause celebrity, didn't it? Uh, 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 by bikers and stuff about they wanted more protection for. Well, people. I think it was added to, you know, that uh, the the one I remember the guy that, that the guy got run over was the guy that started uh, DBA uh, uh, beer bar down in the Lower East Side yeah. was on his way. Ray Dieter was on his way. I think it was name was on his way to 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 go to the bar. Uh, to run the bar, yeah. and at like Houston and yeah. First, someone made a someone made too tight a turn and just knocked him. Just uh, and we're saying him. we're saying this while Ray is on his stationary on his bike, bike. Yes. and what would be amazing is if a truck hit him right now. I'm indoors. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. that would be amazing. You come to the window. There's a window right here. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. You know something? It's funny, but I hear you're out of breath, right? I must be doing yeah. the biking thing all wrong. Because well, my heart rate's at 145. But I never can get it up past 110. You have to work your ass off. <laughs> well, why should I do that? Well, it's not probably worth Strength it, actually. Yeah, it's probably not going to help I mean, you anymore, you, Alex, so I wouldn't worry about it's it. It's not going to help me anymore? What are you saying, Ray? I'm saying Are you saying, that, hey, Pops, don't try and preserve the flesh. It's going away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you should work your way up slowly till it's not like something that's going to kill you. Also, you have to figure out what your max heart rate is at your age. Oh, my, like my maximum, uh, for most people, the maximum heart rate, 80. no, the, if, at my age, 80%. the maximum heart rate for most people is zero. Zero, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, back in March when I, back in March, after a couple of days of really realizing that my heart rate was about 140 and not going down when I'd lie down to go to bed, mm -hmm. I went in to my cardiologist who took me down to the, uh, and, and basically, I spent a day in, at Mount Sinai getting electroshock and the whole thing. I've been fine ever since. I'm down to like 80 or something like that. Yeah. But she wants to put a monitor thing on me next month for a couple of weeks just to sort of see how I am over time. Yeah. But, you know, it was weird, though. It was just, it was just boom, 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 and it didn't slow down or anything. That's, a, that's basically a fibrillation. It's a flutter. Yeah, and they and defibrillate it by... Uh, attaching. Because it was fast, though. Yeah. They said, "Well, do you, do you feel out of breath?" You know, because yeah. of course it's pumping blood. You know, so I'm not. I, you know, if it was the other way around, if it was like a, an erratic heartbeat or something, yeah, probably I feel out of breath. I had that happen uh, a couple of years ago, and I had fluid all around. You know, but this was nothing. The Here we go again, wrong, folks. It's, Ali, it's Alex Bennett's waiting room. Exactly, it's God's waiting room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, where were we? Uh, so um, uh, let me see here. What else is there to talk about? Mm. Um, uh, we, we, you know, there's enough with with Trump. I mean, you can go on forever oh, about geez. about that that car wreck. You know, um, I think there's almost nothing else everybody's talking about anyway at this point because it's just so overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like... I, 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 I hope we survive it. You know. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we're going to survive it. That uh, we're we're going to survive it, but we're not going to survive it. In other words, there's going to be enough damage done in the four years that if he isn't elected, uh, re-elected, uh, we've already lost the rest of the world, and nobody feels sorry for us because we elected this guy. You know. Right. 
Oh, listen, he's he's on right ourselves. I never pant. I never run out of breath. I guess I'm doing it all wrong. Well, you, you got to like I don't know, man. You got to like you rev it up, up and push really hard. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my uh, uh, I, ta- I I only take it up to about a resistance of 5. Yeah, see, I'm putting it way up high and I'm put, put you know, I'm pedaling almost as hard as I can. Yeah, so I, uh, how high is it? Well, he's dead. He, he's dead, <laughs> yeah. He, he. How how high is it? It's the Wi-Fi here that sucks. I turned off the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, how high is what? How high is your uh, is, resistance Is your resistance on the bike? Oh, I don't know because I don't have the machine, their machine on here. Let me see. Uh... Uh, power, my power is 220 uh, and I'm at 60 RPM. No, 316 is my power now. Your, your power? I, I yeah. This isn't like what you, this isn't like a life cycle. Yeah. This actually measures your, like your pedaling power. Yeah, well, I, how, I, how much? I do about 90 RPM, you know. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm at like 70 right now. I really wish that I lived in a town where I could go biking. You know, I really don't want to take a bicycle out on the streets in New York. Mm-hmm. You know, not after the stories we heard tonight, you know, about. Yeah, right. I have friends who go, who do the Central Park thing, but they are real, and they're, they're fast bikers, but they're now, they now want to have a 25 mile an hour speed limit on bicycles. Going, going around Park Drive and Central Park. Really? And the guys, the real pro guys with the lightweight bikes and the helmets and everything, are uh, a lot faster than 25 miles per hour. Uh, yeah, you know, you know what I really miss about New York? Now, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but there's no traffic going through Central Park. Not anymore. There's traffic there's, going uh, across. Only 72nd Street, I think, is the only one that's going through the park. And, the that goes, and, and that goes in a driveway that goes under the park. Well, not 72nd, but 86th and 68th, 66th. Yeah. 72nd, I think you still can I go used through. To, I used to love it when I'd say to the uh, cab driver, hey, cab driver, I'm going home. Uh, let's go through the park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I did that for a while. Golden yeah. Gate Park. Yeah, but, it, but, but you can't do it in Central Park. No, for the only more. the park drive, the internal circular drive is now off limits, except the only cars I've seen other than obviously cops or anything like that. Yeah. There's the minibus that goes to that, uh, to the uh, restaurant that's on the on, on the lake there, whatever the one that's, uh, yeah. and oh, it, yeah. but it only goes there a couple times an hour or something, so it's it's minimal. I mean, yeah. it's all. I was there a while back. It was all bicyclists and runners. Now they still have horses going through Central Park, don't they? Mm-hmm. They still have horses going through Central Park. Yes, uh, they do. But there's a horse tra- There's a horse path yeah. that you can bridle path you can go on. I mean, if you see any horses on Park Drive, it's probably police horses. No, no, no. I'm talking about horses and carriages. Oh, carriages. I, you know, I think they still do down at the lower end there, where, like down at Central Park South, you can go up through a little of it. You know, I don't know whether that's included in the. They're uh, trying. They're trying to do away. The with, they're trying to do away with the horses and carriages. They want to well, do the away. Horse, they only have yeah, a, anti-horse people. <laughs> they only have a little section in Central Park South where you can go in the carriage, yeah. but as far as Anywhere else in the park, no, you can't. And right. the only horses you see are, like you said, police on a horse, which there seem to be quite a, more of now. Whenever yeah. I go, oh yeah, there. you see them. You see them quite a bit, just, yeah. just around. Not as much in my neighborhood, but you go down to Midtown and and stuff. You know, you you definitely see them out there. Yeah. I know the yeah. thing about the horse carriage yeah. thing yeah. though is that some of the real anti-horse carry horses on there say, "Oh, the horses are being whatever. You know, it's they shouldn't be on the street." And it's but there's an ulterior motive because a lot of them are are paid by by real estate people who want those old horse stables on the Upper West Side that could be uh, big big bucks to reconvert into housing, and yeah. so there's been a whole run on that. The pro, you know, the 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 people who who who, who do the horse, you know, are pro horse in carriage, are saying, well, you know, the horses are treated better, than, you know. They aren't on, they aren't there every day. They they get they get, you know they get good good food. They almost never get 
hit by anybody, though it does happen occasionally, but people get hit on the bicycle. So it's like, you know, how much of it is real concern for the animal and how much is it is real concern for getting for grabbing that real estate? That's what I really want to know. Well, I think it's more grabbing the real estate. I think, well, the, the real real virulent ones that are out there. Oh, horse with sack, oh, well, you know, one of the most yelling ones, at the horse I'll people. tell you what I did once. You, it used to be that the horse and carriages could go almost anywhere uh, oh, yeah. it, uh, in low, uh, from, from Central Park it, down. Uh, and yeah. I remember years ago, uh, I, I took a woman and uh, a couple of uh, women with me, and we got, I got into a horse and carriage, and we took it all the way down to Max's Kansas City, which was down in Union Square. Yeah, you know. Yeah, well, no, I think they're not doing that now. We you left know, a trail. I don't think you ever see it. We left a trail. That, we left a, it's legally left, or whatever. We left a trail of shit behind us. It was wonderful. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Well, actually, though, when I, I've walked by there a few times on Central Park South, where most of the horses, and now you'll see that some of those carriages, they actually have a shit catching. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that, so it doesn't actually go down to the. But if you're in the horse, you're on the carriage, and the horse decides it wants to What's that to go, episode of Seinfeld? It just lifts its what's tail that, up and goes. What's <laughs> that episode of Seinfeld uh, mm. uh, where uh, uh, Kramer gets a job running yeah. a horse and carriage? Yeah. And he feeds the horse some beefarino. I think they called it <laughs> because they couldn't use a they couldn't use a, the uh, the real name right. of it. And and uh, and the horse starts farting. <laughs> well, I, I mean, love that episode. You do that yeah. occasionally. The that was the romance, ladies and gentlemen. The romance. Of the exactly. The romance. Anybody of, here? The romance yeah, of the horse and carriage. Anybody here? Uh, I talked about this last night, and uh, we have a different bunch of people here now. Watch the uh, uh, the Sasha Baron Cohen show. The new show. Oh, no, he I has. heard all sorts he, of yeah, things. Yes, about it. it's hilarious. When he's getting them, the third graders to carry guns and everything. Yeah, I mean it. It yeah. is. It was so funny that my wife actually wet her pants watching it. I did too. Really? <laughs> I've never been a big fan he's of his. Awesome. I don't he's know like why. He's so obnoxious. He's so obnoxious. I love it. Yeah. Just, oh, okay. Well, that's it. And he has the worst makeup on, and he's still fooling the people. Yeah, the, 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 well, the, <laughs> the makeup is is not convincing mm -hmm. and yet all these people are falling for it you mm -hmm. know uh, well, the, the dick cheney signed a thing it's supposed to be like a waterboard <laughs> or something and and supposedly sarah palin too. wants to sue him i didn't know it was some guy you know to a comedian you no, know. well that they, yeah. have, they, they haven't they haven't gotten to that show yet that they no, I know. this That's one the, this had the big name was bernie sanders although they had trent lott doing a commercial for kids being able to have guns mm -hmm. um but uh that's the thing i mean what he's showing is that you can get away with anything if you're doing it for tv basically people people just believe oh okay you're i want to be i want to be on tv hey look here's brian hi brian hey. hello <laughs> you know you wear that shirt a lot and it looks like you're wearing suspenders i'm not <laughs> No. But it looks like you're wearing suspenders. I know it does. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's your suspender shirt. Mm -hmm. Did you get to see the uh, the uh, Sasha Baron Cohen thing yet? I'm sorry. Did you get to see the Sasha Baron Cohen show yet on Showtime? No, I knew that he did something. Uh, he, he was pranking politicians. That's about all I know. Yep. Well, not just politicians. Uh, there's an art dealer in this show he pranks, and a family just uh, who voted for Trump that he he <laughs> pranked, uh, and uh, and Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. uh, I was surprised that Bernie Sanders wasn't on to him. Mm -hmm. uh, although, if you if you had say Sasha Baron Cohen came and pranked you, okay, and you suddenly realized what was going on, would you still go along with it? I think I would. Mm. I would no, just care. to see where it was going. Mm. Yeah. The minute I saw the makeup, I would know something up was up. Well, you, I mean, it was just so bad. Yeah, yeah. 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 But but he, they're clueless. It, but they're not in show business, so they don't know. I mean, they're not really. 
I mean, I have a, I've had been around makeup so much. I'll know. Like, wait a minute. Well, you know what? I never was. Able, what I was never able to figure out. People must love to be on television, mm-hmm. because you remember that yeah. show, Taxi Cab Confessions. Yes. <laughs> now, they didn't get releases from. I I interviewed the guy who produced that show. Hold on a second. I'm going to sneeze. It's in time. Anyway, I interviewed the guy who did that show, produced that show, and I said, when you do the releases on those people, do you get them to sign the releases beforehand or afterwards? He said, oh, always afterwards. I said, but you could be shooting the whole thing and then all of a sudden you want them to sign a release and they realize what they've said and they go, fuck you, I'm not signing a release. And he said, in the whole time we've been doing this show, not a single person has ever refused to sign a release. Mm-hmm. Hey, their 15 just minutes of fame. Huh? What were you going to say? What would you say, uh, Brian? They, they, that's a plus. Well, that, that, that's, that's an interesting answer. But my answer, more matter-of-factly put, would be it's just the roll of the dice. If they say no, then, well, you wasted maybe three hours, but then you go on and do another three yeah, hours. But but I asked him, I said... Fall off a horse, you get right the yeah, fuck but, back. But, you know, if, right horse again. If, you get a, if you get some really good tape, you know, that would make a good segment on the show, and then you can't get the release, then you, you're out something. But the thing was, he said... Everybody wants to be on TV. Everybody was signing the releases, even if they were getting a blowjob in the back of that cab. You know? Everyone wants their 15 minutes of fame, Alex, like Andy Warhol said, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, they'll, sure. and they'll get it whatever way they can. And, and, and Trump's managed to stretch it out to 20 minutes. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trump's managed to stretch it out for 30, fuck, 30, 40 fucking years. Well, the old saying goes, you well, some of the people, some of the time, but not all the people, all the time. But if you can do it once every four years, you get elected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True. <laughs> um, oh boy. See, yeah. you know what I bought? It was uh, it was uh, a big holiday just finished. I don't know if you know the big holiday that just finished up here. Uh, but National it, Donut Day? No, that no, was last no, Christmas. No, <laughs> it was it was uh, Amazon Prime Day. Oh, oh yeah. And they had a lot of good deals on stuff, so I, I, I don't know why I did this. They had a thing called the Echo Show, which is like the little TV they have. Mm-hmm. And it's 229 bucks, and they were selling, blowing it out for 129 So it's I figured, bad. save 100 bucks. why not? I already have an Echo Spot. I already have a regular Echo. I may as well get this one. This is great. I could ask it to play the lyric while a song is on. Let me see the lyrics, and it'll run the lyrics of the song. Mm. Cool. And I can get That's it to wild. change the channels on the TV set, and I can, and it's got a nice screen, and it has beautiful pictures they put up there, like of jelly beans and flowers, and uh, mm. so. uh, it's, uh, and, uh, and I put it in the kitchen. It was a perfect place. Yeah, to save up my next hundred dollars for this. Huh? What? I'm going to have to save up yeah. for my next uh, bucks. Well, I, I now own three Echo devices. Jeez. Yeah. You haven't talked to each other? Uh, no, no. And I, I, don't, I don't keep them in the same room because if I go Echo, they all go, what? At the same time, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I have enough problems with the one in the bedroom. All of a sudden, something will be said on TV or something. And there's a little speaker, neck, you know, surround sound speaker next to the uh, next to the spot that's on the on my nightstand. Mm-hmm. And so it's the little round one they have. And uh, you're, you're uh, luck. They talk to each other well, and they start well, plotting, well, uh, well, you know, the overthrow of humanity. Yeah, but they all of a sudden she'll start talking out of nowhere. Oh, that was in 1975. What? <laughs> you know, and and uh, uh, and and nobody said echo. Nobody triggered her. I ever say echo instead of Alexa because if I say, it, it, with my name, it would become a problem. But they say you know it, 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 it'll, she'll just start talking. Hey, she's got an Alzheimer's. <laughs> you know. Hey, Alex. Yeah. I have a I have a Google a Google Home. Yeah. And the other day I asked it something and I and it didn't know and it, I said to my wife I said that fucking thing doesn't know anything, and and Google Home says I'm so sorry that I disappointed you again, 
<laughs> Swear to God, we were like dying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then it never did it again. I tried, but I can't get it to do it. You know, you used to be able to say, uh, "Tell me a dirty joke," and it would tell some stupid joke that was not really dirty. Now, you, it won't tell dirty jokes anymore. Well, said, I, I, I'm I was, sorry, I don't understand. I was thinking of putting the echo in here. Uh, I was thinking of putting the echo in here uh, in the <laughs> office, but I'm just afraid that it would start, you know babbling or something while we're doing the show mm-hmm. and, i'm certain uh, it would yeah you know i mean i, I uh, the reason for it to have it here is so if we need to ask a question like when was so-and-so born i could ask it and it would tell me but mm-hmm. it's it's vocal recognition is pretty amazing it's pretty good uh you know who's terrible is apple siri mm-hmm. is maybe the worst voice recognition system in the business now I can say something to Siri and she never hears it right. You know? And I talked to I talked to our cleaning woman and she can't use Siri because she has an accent. And Siri doesn't understand accents. But my phone recognizes me. See? Just yes, op- it, yeah. it just opened up and there we go. And you know what is great about this face recognition? Let's say you call me. And the phone is ringing. I wondered why it was when I would look at it, all of a sudden the ringer would go lower and lower and lower. And I thought maybe there was something wrong with it. No, they built that in that if it finally recognizes your face, it lowers the ring because they know you're holding the phone. And you don't want to be annoyed by it being too loud. How cool. Yeah, it is cool. Hey, Alex, I told told my Google Home that my name is Mr. President. And so when I say, uh, hello, hey, Google. How are you this morning? And it says, hello, Mr. President. Would you like your schedule today? <laughs> <laughs> Kills my kid oh, every time. only. <laughs> he thinks I'm such an idiot. I love it when it calls me Mr. President. I just, I have well, to Well, I that. told I Siri that my name was piece of shit. <laughs> and it would always like, uh, well, piece of shit, you have some mail. Uh, you know. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Asshole would be another good one, too. Asshole would be another good one. Work. Good morning, asshole. Yeah, yeah this would be a good one for Brian because he likes to use the language. Right. Or, or in, like, the jerk that Steve Martin called his dog shithead. Shithead. You could be shithead. Good right. morning, shithead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to, any of that stuff. I don't know why. I just don't need any more voices in my head. <laughs> then he's already got, yeah. Yeah, Not really. Yeah, yeah. God. Um, I don't think I've ever been. I don't think I've ever bought anything on, um, you know, uh, on Amazon at all. My my sister occasionally sends me like <laughs> books and things that I ask for for Christmas, and it comes on Amazon. But I haven't done it. I just you've never I bought an Amazon. I, product. I I don't order anything not on Amazon. Mm. If I need a pa- a box of bandages, I will <laughs> order them on Amazon. Right. Uh, I I, I well, I'll buy shit on eBay too. Well, well no, eBay, I, yeah, I've done that. Well, you know, because uh, I've, I'm I'm on Shecky's uh, Prime. I can get on Girlfriend's Prime, but I don't. He one day years ago he said to me, "Hey, I can have other people. I can three other people or something on Prime." So do you want to be on? I said, "Sure." So I, that's how I get my Prime. All right. So uh, I don't pay anything per year. And I'll see sometimes, what is the cheapest thing I can order? And I'll see something like 50 cents. And mm-hmm. they'll, they'll send it to me. Yeah. Amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, it cost them more to send it to me than it cost, uh, than they made money out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, did, are you raising uh, your yeah. hand? Yes. Ray, Ray. Yeah, I this. just want, I only have, I have less than 10% of my battery, so. Uh, why I'll you, either why, hang up you know or something? Disappear. This is what's so stupid about working out. They should be able to allow you to attach your USB port to that bike so that while you're pedaling, you'll be powering your phone. They do mm-hmm. on the other bikes, on the uh, like on the life cycles and stuff, but not on this one. What, you can actually charge your phone? Yeah. By, yeah, that by one pe- has a USB port on it. I see it from here. Yeah, but is that for power? But I don't have a connect. Yeah. Is, is that for power? 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Mine has mine has the the attachment at my place, but it isn't for this the newer phones. It's the old what big thick attachment, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, this one, the one next to me has both. It has a thick one and it has a USB port. But I don't know if it powers or not. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. So. Yeah. I've, I, 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 there have been things happening, and I can't remember what the hell they are. They <laughs> always... Well, you know what I loved was that, I mean, I know it's old news, but these the miracle of getting those kids out of the cave. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I watched... What they did is just amazing. Well, what I, and then the, yeah, and the coach, the coach um, in there, he was a former uh, Thai monk, and so he taught them how to meditate, so that they spent hours every day, you know, meditating, so they wouldn't freak out. Um, and yeah. it worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I yeah. that story, the, I loved it when that story was happening, <laughs> because it superseded a lot of Trump. It upstaged Trump. You know, in a media that just has found Trump is just the gift that keeps on giving. For for a change, they had another story they could run, and it wasn't a controversial story. It must was be a, a nice free story. Night. It was what? It must be a fill free night because I don't see him. Thank on God. It. No, yep. it, it's, <laughs> it's a fill free night. Yeah. I'm just thinking God. about Trump. I'm just because I'm thinking about Trump as you're talking, Ali. I don't mean to interrupt, but as you're, as you're talking, I'm just. The more I'm, the more and more I want Trump to like have a stroke or a heart attack, and I want every, every, infinitesimal second, nanosecond film as he's stroking out on live national TV. <laughs> that same pig, I want him deconstructed, and I want his works in full bloom to show on live TV, international coast to coast coverage, and I want his whole fucking family humiliated as a result of this. Well, here's a good question. <laughs> if, like Stalin, he had a heart attack and there were people there, do you think anybody would really rush to resuscitate him? Well, I don't care if they, they rush or not. I want him to have that heart attack and I want to see it every second of <laughs> you, it. What you want, I don't no, want it I'll, edited. I'll tell you if what I you, miss what, no. the live coverage, I want to see it you know, on repeat. I, I will do you, you I, I'll do you one better. It should be in slow motion. Or if he shit, even if he shits himself yeah. and he has to, and I mean like he shits blood. I'm not talking just a normal shit. I'm talking like health red, al red alarm. You know, embarrassing and he lives through it but you know, he can't be present anymore because he's shitting blood and guts and then pouring out everywhere and you see it pouring down on his pant legs and shit like that on C-SPAN, you know, boosting their ratings. I want to see that. I want him to have that humiliation. Mm. You Gee. know, I, I like your spirit. <laughs> yeah. You've got gumption. <laughs> and what was it, uh, Luke? Lou Grant said to Mary Richards on yeah, I was like, I, yeah, yeah, you yeah. got, I hate guns. Uh, you, you know, you, you know, you've got, you know what? You've got, got spunk. All. You know what? I hate spunk. Spunk. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Absolutely. It's yeah. oh my only, God. it's only activated when it's motivated by hate though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Doesn't take much at the moment though. Well, you know, no, you, 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 you can call else. Jack after this show is over and do that same exact material and nobody's going to stop you now. <laughs> It'll seem forced, though. I'm yeah. sure something else will trigger me, though. Who knows? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I'm, I I like your outrage because it's an outrage that while I, every one of us probably feels exactly what you were saying, none yep. of us really want to say it. Yeah, I know I said it, but you all were thinking it. Yeah, I think it's healthy that you can say it and not feel bad. I mean, well, I wish, I mean I don't. I've had those thoughts, but I just can't say them. Well, I, there are certain, hey, Ray, there are certain yeah. people, as you may very well know, and everyone else here may know, there are certain people who've been on these programs in the past who would make you feel ashamed or would try to make you feel ashamed. And I think you know who I'm referring to. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 But as I say, the coast is clear on that one, so you're welcome to go on there and wail away. Yes. Well, even if the coast wasn't clear and that person was still on there, I'd still do it. I don't give a fuck. Right. Is the election over with, though, for that person? Or no. has it happened yet? Oh, no. it doesn't oh, okay. happen until next year sometime. Something oh, jeez. Like okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. But Whatever. We, but at least we don't have to hear about it. You know. 
ad nauseum. <laughs> but did she take herself off? <sighs> no, no, no. Well, oh, okay. uh, well she kind of took herself off, you know. Oh, okay. I said, okay. no, well, here's what happened, actually. I said, I didn't say, uh, you know, get off the air. I just said, I don't want you promoting your candidacy any longer on the air. Uh, number one, it's boring. And number two, if you were working at a radio station, you'd have to leave the radio station while you were running for office. So, True. you know, yeah. if, if you, if you want to have a bully pulpit, go do it somewhere else, you know, for your campaign. And mm. she chose to take it somewhere else. So, you know. Yeah, there was that, uh, that guy, that politician in San Francisco years ago. I can't remember his name. He used to be a good talk show host on KGO, but whenever he ran, he'd go off the air. Well, because well, that was you know that was a ruling. Forget his name. But that was a ruling in broadcasting yeah. is that if you were running for political office, you couldn't. It wasn't so much you couldn't be on the air, but you'd have to have all the people who were running against you on the air, and right. give them time, and yeah. give the, give them equal time. And if you're doing a three-hour show every day, that's a lot of time a station's got to give up to other people. See, I'm even more forgiving. I think I'm even more forgiving than that than you are, Alex, on account of the fact that I don't care if you're running for the position of the Grand Poobah of the Church of Satan, as long as you as long as you don't make me feel like a piece of shit by pointing your finger at me or anyone else, including Phil, by making anybody else feel like a piece of shit or less of a human being, simply because they spout things and say words that offend you. Yeah. I won't do the same to you in turn. Right. Well, you know, so, you uh, know run it, for uh, office all you want. I don't give a fuck about that. Just, you know, you know, if you're going to point your finger at somebody, do it off the air and make sure, you know, none of us are. Where did I where did I have a discussion about with, with somebody and I can't remember. I think maybe maybe it was with uh uh uh, uh, uh wasn't it Stephen Pearl, but I can't remember. And the question was, if, if you know, if you had somebody who wanted to, you know, um, uh, was pro Hitler, wanted to come on and be pro Hitler, would you be against having them on? And I said no. I said I don't prevent anybody from coming on and talking about what they want to until what they're doing may hurt people. Mm. Then, if it's going to hurt people, yes, I, you know, I mean, if the guy said. I think Hitler was a great guy, and he was a wonderful guy, and it was misunderstood, and I, I'm all for Hitler, and I'm all for what he believed in. But the minute he said, and we should kill all the Jews, then it's goodbye. Mm -hmm. You know, then you're over the line. Because <laughs> then you're advocating the hurting of people. Like, for instance, with Donald Trump, you weren't advocating hurting Donald Trump. You were advocating him having a massive stroke and being able to see every sentient moment of it. Mm, mm. And it would be great also in slow motion, as I say, you know, mm. uh, and you could play it back, you play it backwards and play it forwards. The shit coming out, the shit coming back up in. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> well, Jeff, what do you hey, think? I... Oh, turn on your mic. Yeah. What were you saying? What were you going to say? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I am hoping that maybe Trump could end up living in North Dakota for, for the rest of his life. <laughs> what makes you say Live that? with your people, yeah. What makes you say that? I'm curious. It's like he wouldn't be able to annoy anyone. No. He could just be there doing nothing. Yeah. Well, he'd, be with his, he'd be with his people, with his voters. You know, and realize Somehow that voter, it's not as much fun. Very much longer, though. Well, you know, it's not as much fun as you uh, the, know the, the, uh, being the, in New York and and in capitals of the world with crap loads of money. Yeah. Well, the thing that bothers me about Trump and the way we handle Trump, he's like a crying baby, and if you pick up the crying baby, they keep crying. Mm. But maybe if you ignore the crying baby, they will stop crying. And I think we should stop paying attention to Donald Trump. Yeah. You know, I, like the Eric so, Cartman. You know, because uh, and and, event, and and if we don't pay attention to him, he'll then do everything he can to get you to pay attention to him, and he'll start stumbling over himself and fucking up like massively. You know. But here, here there, I just thought of a caveat to that, uh, uh, Alex. If you being in his position as president, and more specifically his uh, immediate underling, Mr. Michael Pence, they. Mm -hmm. 
must person like Michael Pence and the GOP establishment, yeah. um, <laughs> mafiosi, they don't want you to pay attention. And it's when you don't what you don't pay attention to that they pass and enact the most heinous of legislation or legislative agendas. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad you said mafiosi because he really is a gangster. Well, he's I like mean, the John Gotti of the mafia. Somebody once said a talk show host on, uh, I think it was Aubrey Rabenhoff who said that. And uh, as much as I can't stand the man, especially since uh, you know the story you told Alex about how he tried to unseat you and us usurp you, yeah. and from uh, Sirius, uh, he had a point there. He is the John Gotti of. Uh, of, of, of politics of the GOP he airs out the dirty laundry whereas the most of the GOP establishment in terms of their bigotry their collective bigotry and racism they want to keep that hidden well there's no question in my mind that that certainly he he was mafia associated there's oh, no, yeah. absolutely. no there's a BBC uh, documentary on it it's really good they show Russia, all of it yeah. now, now I don't Italian and, and yeah in New Jersey and everything I, I don't completely blame him okay because he was building things in New York City, and the only way you're going to get that done is by playing <laughs> ball with the mob. He was in the real estate business. Yeah. In the city, you know, that's pretty much that's part anything of, done. That's part of the business you're doing. Construction, you know, but, concrete sand, trucks would come by. All the concrete trucks have Italian names on the side. Yeah. Mm. Wonder why. It's sanitation. <laughs> we are big in the hey, construction hey, business. Hey, 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 Scott, you've been quiet, Scott. Why haven't you been talking? You afraid? What are you, chicken? No, oh, I'm, I'm just listening. <laughs> I'm just listening. Yeah. You guys are talking. Yeah. Talking is fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, I every time, though, every time I see you with your hair down like that, I want to buy one of those cigars, you know, with the with the Dutch Masters on them. You know, remember <laughs> Dutch Masters cigars <laughs> and all the like, guys yeah. with the, uh, you know, what you, long, what you, long, yeah, what Dutch you got hair. there? Or it could be in the 1776 musical, the musical 1776. In Hamilton. You could be like, I, yeah. I want to buy you. Just go in blackface. For next Christmas, I don't know where you buy them. I'm going to get you one of those, <laughs> one of those ruffled collars. To put oh. on, <laughs> pulling off some Jolson tunes too. Are you ready? Yeah, you yeah. could be Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton. <clears throat> huh? He could, he could be Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton. Yeah, that's right. Oh, and Zilla, Lafayette. Yeah. Oh, only, sons. only he doesn't rap. That's the problem. Or King George. Oh, King George. You could be King George. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I'll work on rapping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. There you go. Got a smile anyway. Yeah. I went and saw School of Rock last night. What an amazing show. The, have you, has anyone seen that? Uh, the no. kids? I saw the movie with Jack Black. Yeah, I mean, on stage, it was amazing. These kids are incredible. It, well, it, what's interesting is who wrote it. Yeah. Uh, Andrew it? Lloyd Webber. Andrew Lloyd Webber. It was, it's not the kind of thing he normally would have uh, written. And it was in London years before it went to Broadway. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, um, and I don't, usually don't like his work, but I hear that that's a very good show. It is a good show. I think his best show is Jesus Christ Superstar, and uh, this is his second best. So his first and last. I didn't like Jesus Christ Superstar. I saw it when I was on Broadway, uh, and I thought it, the only thing it had was a it was a gr it was a great third act. But that's all you remember when you're walking out of the theater is the third act, right? Nobody goes out humming yeah. the first act. Well, I think people have improved the way they do it over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say at the beginning, they kind of didn't know what the hell they were doing. Yeah. Hey, listen, there's our theme song. Uh, whatever the theme song was. What's it called? Swing That Jazz Stick. That's what it's called. Swing That What's Jazz Stick. Swing That Jazz Stick. Oh, there you go. Oh, I thought you said Jazz Dick. Buy, buy as <laughs> much. Buzz Dick. Use as much of our music as you want to. That's who, who does it. <laughs> Hey, listen, thank you so much, Jeff, for being here this evening. Always nice to have you here. And, of course, uh, we've helped uh, 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 Ray pedal his way to good health this evening. That's right. He's doing all the workout that would have been done by Brian if he cared about working out. Right, Brian? Uh, I was going to say, he's taking better care of himself than I am. I wasn't that. Yeah, and, of course, uh, I have to. there is the Dutch master himself, Scott Boddicker. And, I too. and of course, uh, John Rockwell is there as well. Hey, listen, why don't you all 
I give a big wave goodbye to our audience, okay? Uh, yeah, just that, that's it. That's it. Well, hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow night. Thanks for making a good show tonight. Great show. Thank you. And that's it. That's our citizens panel for this evening. Let me uh, hang up on them rudely. So, and let me also get offline. So, uh, Jack uh, Bishop with the intersection, who's up next, can use the uh, the, 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 the the Skype line. Uh, I'm back here again tomorrow night uh, at uh, one o'clock this morning is Connections, and then tomorrow night at 9.30 is Damian Chaplin. He does a little program called uh, The Exchange. And then I'm back again tomorrow night with The Ramble, 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody. Bye.